Oh God, we come to you this morning. We come to you alone. Sometimes it's so easy for us to try to chase after so many things around us. We realize that those things leave us empty. They leave us with that hole that we have in our heart. So God, we pray that you come and fill our hearts. Come and give us your peace. Come and give us your presence. So Lord, we ask that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart here be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. The journey of prayer. I, I, I struggled with a title of this series. And, and, and the reason why is that sometimes with prayer, we don't quite know exactly what to do with it. We do it. Sometimes we do it half-heartedly. Sometimes we do it emphatically, but we realize, well, maybe it's not going to do anything. But I wanted us to think about during this season or this series, you know, really, prayer is a journey. Prayer, prayer is a journey that, that we take as followers of Jesus Christ. And a matter of fact, it's a journey of coming home. It's a journey of, of coming to the arms of Jesus, where we can truly find rest. You know, I grew up in a town called Hutchinson, Kansas, which is about 45 minutes northwest of Wichita there in central Kansas. And, and there is a stretch of road called K-96. K-96 actually starts in Wichita, and uh, actually it, it used to a long time ago all the way across the state of Kansas, but recently it just stops there in Wichita, Kansas, and it goes all the way out to Colorado, and, and it kind of winds around my hometown of Hutchinson. So in order for me to go home from Wichita whenever I was at college or Fringe University, I would have to take K-96 and, and take, at one time it was a two-lane road, then they made it to a four-lane road. And, and I love that road. I still love that road. Because any time I get on that road, and I'm headed west, I know that I'm going home. Even though home is a whole lot different now than it was whenever I was in Wichita, it's still a reminder, man, there's one certain place that I absolutely love on this road, and I have a picture of it right here. It's called the Lucky Tree. And this tree sits on the, the side of K-96, on, on the eastbound side of K-96. And, and, and growing up and, and through high school and through college, e even today, when I see this tree, it reminds me that I'm, that I'm coming home, that, that I'm close to being home. And, and when, when I see this tree, it reminds me of the opportunity that we have to pray. And that, that prayer is, is one of those things that reminds us that, that we are, are, are close to home. So I'd I, I like for this to be kind of a signpost for us. To think about prayer as, as this tree as we begin this journey of prayer, to remind us of what is it that, that we experience in prayer? What is it that happens in prayer? And how can we faithfully be 
Christ's disciples as we go to God in prayer. See, the first thing that we must understand as we take this journey is that Jesus is a part of our prayers. Jesus is a part of our prayers, and, and Jesus prays for each and every one of us. And how do we get that? Well, we get that in our scripture this morning from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. I invite you to follow along in your Bibles, or you can follow along with the words that we have on the screen this morning. Hear the word of the Lord. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to that faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In the beginning of this passage, reminds us of, of who Jesus is. First and foremost, we know that he is the Son of God. He, he came down from heaven to, to live life as one of us, to, to suffer, to experience human emotion, to, to live life as we have lived life, but most importantly, to, to die for our sins so that he may be raised again to ascend to heaven where he sits at God's right hand, where, as I mentioned before, he is praying for us. Sometimes we don't think about that as followers of Jesus Christ, that, that Jesus prays for us. We, 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 we look at his life and, and the redemptive work that he has done, but that redemption did not stop when he ascended into heaven. That, that redemption continues to happen inside of each and every one of us because Jesus still continues to pray. Jesus continues to, to lift us up so that we can have life and life abundantly. I don't know about you, but, but, but that gives me a, a joy and a peace in my life to know that, that Jesus continually prays for us. In John chapter 17, we, we get kind of a glimpse of, of what it is that, that Jesus prays for. In John 17, he, he's praying for his disciples because he knows that they are coming up to the time where, where he will be led away, where he will be whipped and bruised, where they will scatter. And, and he prays for all of the disciples. And then in verse 20, he adds us to his prayer. And he says these words, my prayer is not for them alone, not for just the disciples, but I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. See, it's a reminder that the disciples will, will have this message that they will be able to share to the world. And, and my friends, we are continuing to be Christ's disciples in the world, and we share that message with others, that message of hope, that message of peace, that message of grace. And, and for those who come to faith through that message, Christ prays for. We see that Paul continues to remind us that, that Christ continues to pray for us in Romans 8 verses, verse 34 by saying, Christ Jesus who died more than that was raised to life and is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. So that, that prayer of Jesus continues 
day after day, moment after moment, reminding us, but we here on earth fail to hear that prayer. Or we, we think that since Jesus is praying that prayer, how could we fully hear? How could we fully know? How could we fully understand what it is that Jesus is praying for? Maybe we're like Robert Murray McShane, who was a 19th century Scottish minister, who said, if I could hear Christ praying for me in the next room, I would not fear a million enemies. But yet the distance makes no difference. He is praying for me. See, we don't have to have Jesus in the next room praying for us, but we know that since he is there by the right hand of God or at the right hand of God, and he continues to lift up his prayers, we have that confidence that he is there for us. So so since Jesus prays for us, we then can live in that last part of Scripture that reminds us, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. See, prayer is an opportunity for us to approach the throne of grace, the throne of, the throne of grace with, with confidence, Because when we approach that throne of grace of confidence, we know that God hears our prayers. You know, I can think of many times in my life where I've gone to God in prayer, but it was with a lack of confidence. Maybe you've done this yourself, too, where you've shot up a couple of prayers here or there. And you go, okay, well, maybe God heard that one. But, you know, I prayed it, so I did what I was supposed to do. You know, we we, we pray these these wishy-washy prayers, just thinking maybe God will hear us. But then we forget that we have power. And, And part of the reason why we forget that we have power is because we get distracted. Distraction is one of the the biggest things that keeps us from fully praying, from fully understanding, from fully listening to what God has for us. Richard Foster, who who wrote uh, this, this great book on prayer, also wrote the book Celebrations of Disciplines, he talked about here recently that he talked about superficiality was one of the things that, that kept people from growing in their faith. But he said in the late 90s and early 2000s, even today, he sees that it's something else that is keeping people from being close to God. And what that is, it's distraction. It's being distracted because we allow our, our hearts and minds to go all of these different directions. And, and when we're not focused on who God is or, or what God wants us to, how God wants us to live our lives, then we get moved, if you will. We get set off kilter. We fail to see that what God really wants from us in our prayer life is a relationship. A, a relationship that really stretches three different ways. First, first the relationship stretches inwards, where, where Christ is in us. And that relationship stretches upward in full honor and glory of the God who loves us and who created us. And then through a relationship outward to help us look at our neighbors and to love our neighbors as Christ has loved us. See, when we have that relationship right, then the prayers of petition and the prayers of of reaching out for others is an extremely important part but it's only an important part when we realize that it all has to do with relationship with God. As a theologian by the name of Rob Bell, who way back in 2001, actually uh, it's kind of amazing that uh, he started this series called NUMA, and it was a series that I would lean on heavily as I was a youth director 
by sharing these videos with youth back when I started in youth ministry. But on September 11th, 2001, he started filming his very first NUMA video called Rain. And, and in this video, he, he, he's talking about his young son at the time as they were out going on a camping tr trip. And, and they were walking through uh, the, the forest, and, and Rob noticed that there was a storm that was coming towards them, and they were about 45 minutes away from their base camp. And, and he had his son on his back, and then all of a sudden lightning started to happen around and the rain started to come down. And as the rain started to come down, and as the lightning and the thunder started to, to, to infiltrate this young boy's uh, eyes and mind, he, he started to cry. And he started to worry because he didn't know what was going on. And Rob said that for the rest of the walk, he would say these words, I love you, buddy. We're going to make it. Dad knows the way home. We're going to make it. I love you. And as they kept walking, he kept saying over and over again, I love you, buddy. We're going to make it. Dad knows the way home. We're going to make it. I love you. And as they kept walking and as the rain kept coming down harder and harder, as the, the lightning and the thunder was louder and, and brighter, the sun started to calm down. And the sun started to relax because he was on his father's back. And they made it back just fine. That's what this passage of Hebrews reminds us. It reminds us all about the relationship that we have with a God who loves us and cares for us. It, it helps us to open up as we seek a relationship with God through the storms of life. And it helps us to remember that when we seek the mercy of God, when we seek the grace of God, when we seek living in that relationship with God, everything else isn't minimized because the storms of the life are still there, just like the storms were there for, for Rob's son as, as they were walking through the forest. But everything will be all right that we will make it because our Father knows the way home and we lean on his love and his grace. You know, there's a verse that I go to a lot whenever times are, are rough. And it's a verse that I went to over 20 years ago as I sat at Perkins School of Theology in the dining hall with one of those old box TVs rolled in with squiggly lines because somebody was trying to hold the rabbit ears so we can see what was happening on the television. And, and while we were sitting there, these words from Matthew 11, 28, kept coming to my mind. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. My hope and prayer, my friends, is that as we begin this journey of prayer, as, as we look at how prayer affects us inward, upward, and outward, how we realize that when we pray, we can have the confidence as children of God. 
we can live in our prayers so that Christ may live in us and give us that relationship to know that he loves us, that we're going to make it, that he knows the way home, and most importantly, that he loves us. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for this journey that we are able to take, this journey of allowing prayer to, to gird us and to move us forward, not so that we get whatever it is that we want, but so that we can grow in our relationship with you. Lord, I pray that as we continue to move forward, as we continue to be faithful witnesses of the love and grace that you have given to us, as we continue to pray that you mold us and that you make us into your disciples so that others may come and experience you. And we pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.